There's a lot of talk about the United States acquiring Greenland, but actually we already built a base there at the beginning stages of the Cold War. Imagine a top secret city hidden beneath the Greenland ice sheet. Powered by a nuclear reactor and designed to house a network of nuclear missile launch sites, this isn't science fiction. This was Camp Sentry, one of the most audacious and clandestine projects of the Cold War. If you like learning about history, please take a quick second to subscribe. Also, you can browse through my other videos. I don't just cover one single topic, so if history isn't your favorite, chances are you will find something else you're interested in. In the late 1950s, the Cold War was at its peak. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a tense standoff, and both sides were desperately seeking a strategic advantage. For the U.S. Army, the vast, desolate expanse of the Greenland ice sheet seemed like the perfect hiding place. How did they get there? Back in 1951, the U.S. and Denmark, which has sovereignty over Greenland, signed the Defense of Greenland Agreement. This treaty allowed the U.S. to establish military bases on the island. Publicly, the justification was for defense and scientific research. But secretly, the Pentagon had much bigger plans. This led to the birth of Camp Sentry in 1959. Officially, it was presented to the world and even to the Danish government as a scientific research station to study Arctic conditions. Its public mission was to test new construction techniques under the ice and conduct research on the polar ice cap. And to be fair, a lot of groundbreaking science did happen there, including the drilling of the first ice core that revealed ancient climate data. But the real top secret purpose was a plan Cody named Project Iceworm. The idea was to build a massive, sprawling network of tunnels under the ice, covering an area the size of Switzerland. This subterranean maze would house up to 600 specially modified ICBMs, nuclear missiles aimed directly at the Soviet Union. The logic was simple. These mobile missile launchers, constantly shifting through the tunnels, would be nearly impossible for the Soviets to target in a first strike, ensuring a devastating American counterattack. Building Camp Sentry itself was an incredible feat of engineering. Located about 150 miles inland from the coast, it was built entirely beneath the surface. Army engineers used massive Swiss-made rotary snowplows to carve deep trenches into the ice. These trenches were then covered with arched steel roofs and buried under layers of snow, which quickly hardened into solid ice. The result was a subterranean city. It had over 21 tunnels, totaling nearly two miles in length. Inside, you'd find everything needed for a small community to survive in one of the harshest. Environments on Earth, there were prefabricated buildings, housing barracks for over 200 soldiers and scientists, a hospital, a theater, a library, a chapel, a mess hall, and laboratories. It was a completely self-contained world, shielded from the brutal Arctic winds and temperatures that could plummet far below zero. But how do you power a city buried under the ice? Fossil fuels were impractical. Transporting vast quantities of diesel would have been a logistical nightmare. The solution was radical and futuristic, nuclear power. In 1960, the Army brought in the world's first portable nuclear reactor, the PM-2A. This compact reactor, about the size of a large shipping container, could generate 2 megawatts of electricity and enough steam to heat the entire camp and melt thousands of gallons of water for drinking and sanitation. It was a marvel of modern technology, allowing Camp Sentry to operate with unprecedented independence. For a few years, the project seemed like a success. The camp was operational, the reactor worked flawlessly, and the Army began testing its tunnel-digging techniques for the much larger Project Iceworm. The plan was moving forward. However, they overlooked one crucial, unstoppable force, nature. The U.S. engineers had assumed a Greenland ice sheet was a static, stable block of ice. They were wrong. Geologists and glaciologists studying the ice cores discovered that glaciers are not stationary. They are, in effect, incredibly slow-moving rivers of ice. The entire ice sheet was constantly shifting, deforming, and flowing towards the sea. This was a fatal flaw for Project Icewim. The carefully dug tunnels began to warp and compress under the immense pressure of the moving ice. 
The walls buckled and the ceiling started to cave in. Maintaining the long straight tunnels required for a missile railway system would be impossible. The ice was simply too dynamic. The subterranean city was being slowly crushed. By 1963, it was clear that Project Iceworm was unfeasible. The immense geological forces were something even the U.S. military couldn't overcome. The dream of a hidden Arctic missile base was dead. The scientific mission continued for a few more years, but the structural instability of the camp became a constant problem. In 1966, Camp Sentry was officially abandoned. The Army decommissioned the portable nuclear reactor and shipped it back to the United States. They removed the core infrastructure, but left almost everything else behind. They assumed the camp, along with its waste, would be entombed forever within the ice sheet, a permanent frozen tomb. This included an estimated 200,000 liters of diesel fuel, significant amounts of toxic chemicals like PCBs, and, most worryingly, an unknown quantity of low-level radioactive coolant water from the nuclear reactor. The Danish government was never informed about Project Iceworm or the nuclear weapons it was designed to house. The true nature of the project remained classified for decades, only coming to light in the 1990s. For half a century, Camp Century was forgotten, buried deeper and deeper under annual snowfall. But the story doesn't end there. In recent years, climate change has thrown a new twist into this Cold War saga. As global temperatures rise, the Greenland ice sheet is melting at an accelerating rate. Scientists now predict that by the end of this century, the ice cover in Camp Century could melt away entirely. What was once thought to be a permanent tomb could soon be exposed, potentially releasing the toxic and radioactive waste left behind 50 years ago into the fragile Arctic environment. The legacy of this secret city under the ice now poses a modern environmental and political challenge. Who is responsible for the cleanup? The U.S., which built the base? Or Denmark, which has sovereignty over Greenland? Camp Century and Project Iceworm stand as a stark reminder of the extreme lengths nations went to during the Cold War. It was a project of incredible ambition and ingenuity, a fusion of military strategy and cutting-edge science. But it was also a story of hubris, a powerful lesson that even the most advanced technology can be humbled by the immense and unpredictable forces of the natural world. Thanks for watching. If you found this journey into the Cold War's secrets, fascinating. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos looking into forgotten history. See you next time. And as always, stay informed.